Hey everybody, this episode we're going to uh, be reviewing uh, Knights of the Dinner Table uh, number seven and uh, it's got quite a long run. There's like uh, 160 or something uh, issues available now. Um, uh, but before that, I'd like to show you my artwork and this is what the video is sponsored by. Um, Random Access, uh, Mutandus, all by done by Alexander Turbin myself. You can get these on uh, Patreon, or you can uh, go to alexanderturban.com to uh, purchase any of these books. And uh, that would really help the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm joined today by uh, Colby Caldwell, who is... Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> yeah, uh, all right. Hello, everybody. Um... Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Colby. I'm uh, Alex's stepson, and I am a, uh, a filmmaker. So, uh, I don't normally do uh, a lot of comic reviews. I um, This is uh, sort of outside of my uh, normal forte. Um, but honestly, it's a pleasure to be here on the show today. Um, and the issue that we're reviewing today, uh, Nights at the Dinner Table number 7, um, was actually quite an, in an interesting read for me. Um, this is my uh, first introduction into the series. Um, uh, you know, the first time I've uh, read a, uh, a comic of this type. And, I mean, just getting into this, you know, it's... it's As somebody who has, um, you know, began playing role-playing games, um, or tabletop role-playing games in the last few years... It's really interesting seeing um, how much the culture around them has changed compared to, uh, you know, what, what, what's depicted in, uh, you know, Knights of the Dinner Table. Uh, before before we get into that, I would right. like to uh, first kind of make make a few observations and, and things about uh, the book. Um, when I first uh, heard about this, uh, my roommates had had all bought it and they were trying to get me to read it because they said it was really good really awesome and i said there were too many words <laughs> there's too there's just too many words and um what i meant by that was um the way that the comic book is made um after having gone to comic book stu uh, school at the K joe kubert school um i was kind of conditioned to uh uh create comics in a certain way and think of comics in a certain way uh just kind of like maybe you have by film mm -hmm. um so when i saw this comic i was like all of the illustrations are exactly the same there's there's no real um artistry to it or uh narrative art there's no um uh, establishing shot there's no uh worm's eye view or bird's eye view of the of anything they're just all exactly the same the same character the same same picture same picture same picture same picture so it really threw me for a loop as to what i considered traditional comics right and you know i i i feel the same way um like when i first read it i was like wow you know for for a visual story there's not a whole lot of, of visuals going on um but you know, thinking about it further, I, I do think that it, it can kind of work as a narrative device in this case where, you know, uh, tabletop games are very much theater of the mind mm -hmm. um, where, you know, obviously you're, you're going to be describing all of these, um, you know, events and like actions that characters are taking and uh, things that are going on in the world. Um, and, you know, that's all conveyed through, you know, dialogue between the players and... Um, uh, the dungeon master. So I think from, I guess, a sort of meta narrative standpoint, uh, the dialogue heavy nature of this and like the, mm -hmm. the, the, I guess, a lack of visuals, yep. um, does sort of work to an extent because it, it's, it is like bringing that theater of the mind, um, you know, that, that you would get like through playing a tabletop game and it, it's, it's conveying that through, um, the medium, which, um, I mean, if, if it works, that's you know another thing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I I do think that it's it's not totally out of left field, um, yeah. and I can see like if it was, if it was a conscious choice being made um, by the you know the author and the illustrator, then um, you know I'm totally in support of it. Um, but you know if it, if it was just done because you know um, 
drawings hard. Right, well, right. <laughs> that's right. another story. I think I think that was probably probably it. Uh, it goes against every convention of um, when you have a conversation in comics, you want to stay away from talking heads, which is just a person showing a head talking, showing a head talking, showing a head talking. You want, you know, different visuals. You want to make things unique. You want to make things dynamic. So you want to show different perspectives and all of that. I don't know if they have that kind of terminology in film. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's exactly the same way. You know, yeah. where, where show don't tell is like the, uh, right. like the principal philosophy. Like, right. like when you're working in a visual medium, take advantage of the visuals mm -hmm. because what happens is if it all looks the same and it gets cluttered by dialogue, mm -hmm. It's 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 tiring. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um, but saying that later on, you have a scene where um, one of the characters is admonishing uh, the players. The DM is admonishing the players, um, and he's he's really kind of yelling at them. Where is it? Oh, I think it, was it that? Go back. I, I can't, right here, he's ah. he's admonishing the the characters, the players, um, saying that their minds aren't open to new things. They're not open to different kinds of structures. And then it cuts to this panel where there's not no dialogue or anything, and that speaks volumes. I mean, it's exact same, you know, illustrations, but there's nothing there. Right. I I, I agree. It works uh, really well, especially um, this right down here, mm -hmm. uh, where yeah. you know it, it it cuts to them leaving, like. Yeah. There's a lot of possibilities for visual jokes here, and and you know this this page alone shows that like, given the format, like there's a lot that can be done with this, and I I really wish there was uh, more stuff like this right. uh, present. Like, well, I I feel like there's a lot of moments where because like every I think every character like says something in each panel. Yeah. Where it's yeah, like that much. did not need to happen. Yeah. You yeah. know it. There's a lot of stuff that could be cut from this, and nothing would be lost. Right, right. It's it's definitely well. I, I mean, if it finds its footing, as I said, there's like 160, right. 170 issues. So they definitely find their footing a little bit more as the as the issues go along. Um, one of the things I find fascinating is that all of the characters are basically people I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think every gaming group has it. Like you've got uh, Bob. I think that's his name. Um, he's like snarky and kind of mean to the, all the other guys. And like, you've got BA, the, uh, GM, who's just kind of level headed and trying to move his, his party in the right direction. But then when they do something stupid, he's like, ah, yep. you, know, yeah. you just kind of try to roll with the punches, but you got to send them back on their, on their way. And then you have Sarah, which is, I don't know if this is good or bad, but she's the kind of the, um, not cynical but she she sees all of their characteristic qualities and she's like exasperated sometimes. yeah she i, I she seems like the voice of reason yeah, for this she, otherwise very like chaotic group she, she is definitely the voice of reason and early i can't remember it's early on or later in episode in issues where they they describe how she joined the group and how they were very sexist towards her and they did mm -hmm. not want her part of the group but she kind of uh finagled her way in and, mm -hmm. and now she's like part of the family which is kind of what happens when you have a gaming group like that it's they become like family right yeah and like i like i've i'm in multiple gaming groups right now um and like, like you know when you spend you know upwards of you know over a year like telling uh this story with a cast of characters you you you, you do begin to grow attached to your cast mm -hmm. you know even yep. if yep. uh you weren't necessarily like um you know, like, uh, super close with everybody in the group at first, um, you know, just going on these adventures with people really endears you yeah, to them. Yeah. Do you think you grow a a attached to the characters or the people or both? Both. I, th both. I definitely think it's both. Yeah. Um, where, cause I mean, um, this is definitely like a, um, one of the differences between like, this came out in 1997. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the differences between like, uh, the type of uh you know gameplay that this describes versus the gameplay um that we see now and like right, right. you know like fifth edition yeah um is that nowadays that there's much more um importance placed on the actual uh characters and yeah. the storyline right, that right. that you're all contributing yeah. to tell yeah. um and so as as part of that you know the characters themselves develop um while the players yeah. um yeah. grow yep yeah. Um, I, th I definitely think that's a, a, 
a thing to to move the story along a vehicle to move the story along but also it's it's kind of its own thing because uh later on they actually have uh uh, uh rpg modules of knights of the dinner table where they use the oh. the and they also have tabletop games and right. all kinds of other stuff that go along with this um i think it's horde orc orc horde or something like mm -hmm. that um but yeah you're de you're definitely right it, it's it's from 97 and you can you can definitely tell uh but like i said the the game may change but the people kind of say the same oh yeah Cause, well because it's like i think that everybody um everybody has like a play style that they gravitate to mm -hmm. and so yep. like even as yep. you grow as uh, a player and like you know some things uh change about the way you approach games uh i think that the general like uh i guess approach that you take to characters and like the actual gameplay stays relatively the same. Yeah. Like, like if somebody really enjoys uh, spell casting, yep. for instance, yep. right? Because that's a, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for like the older versions of the game, um, but uh, you know, s spell casters and martial classes, for instance, you know, they they play differently, yep. and you know, they have uh, different appeals to different people. Yeah. So you know, I like I myself, you know, I I gravitate towards uh, wizards because like. I enjoy like having that you know big suite of options, yep, uh, yep. even though you know my characters like in a one v one may not particularly uh, win a fight. Right, so like we, right. there's archetypes that people gravitate to. Right. Um, I, I I often go with clerics yeah. and paladins. Yeah, but um, in later issues, um, that's a, that's also brought up because BA um, challenges them to all have a different kind of character mm. because like. Uh, one will always play like a fairy, one will always play an elf, one will always play right. a bar bar barbarian. And he's like, mix it up, change it up. So they're like, all right, we'll change things up. I'll be a, a barbarian fairy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be a wizard who likes to steal things, or, you know. So even though he challenges them to, to change it up, they never really do. People stay basically who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of true. Um, but let's go, let's look at the, um, the style of the book because it, it's more like a comic strip than it is a comic book because you have like up in the upper left, you have the title of the little mini stories. So it'll go like a few pages. Um, and then like two hours later and it'll go along, you'll go along and then it'll kind of end. And like, this is like a, a to four page story and then it'll go into the next one so even though all though all of the characters are in the same universe and everybody knows everything else um they're they're basically just short snippets of stories that make a, a broader narrative right right it's less of a um i guess like a serial narrative and more, mm -hmm. and more episodic right right uh later issues they do have they do kind of have more more longer stories uh, and they change characters and stuff, uh, but it's all it's basically it's basically the same. They're all just you know sitting around playing playing RPGs. Mm -hmm. um, so, I guess as far as art goes, it's pretty weak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty weak. Um, but you know who everybody is. You know, uh, there's no backgrounds. There's no um, nothing like that to kind of convolute anything. So you just have the characters, and they are what they are. So you either kind of enjoy that, or you you don't. Um, I I personally find it very very attractive. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I I like how each of the characters um, they're they're all very distinct uh, mm -hmm. in their appearance, mm -hmm. um, and not just you know it, it's it's not just for nothing. Like I I think I do think that the design of each of the characters does inform. Mm -hmm. uh their personality yeah. like like brian for instance you know is very well designed i feel like you know he's he's got that uh sort of uh <laughs> ogreish appearance yep yeah, yep yeah. and he's he's kind of level-headed and yet forceful at times too cause right he's, he's kind of the brute the brute yeah exactly even though he plays the magic user and then you know uh you know the bald guy um mm -hmm. up front you know he he plays sort of, I, I guess, the uh, the asshole of the group. Yep, yep, he is. Um, which, you know, by his appearance, you know, it's 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 very telling. You know, yeah. th these are very strongly designed characters uh, for um, as, as simplistic as they are. Yeah, yep. 
So art wise, it's it's kind of weak, but story wise, how do you think it is? Um, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's it's very episodic. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, it from this one issue alone, uh, there was no real overarching narrative that mm -hmm. I could tell. Right. Um, but reading this. There was a lot of times where I was like, yeah, I, I've been in a game like yeah, this. Yeah. Did you chuckle to yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, early on when the character's like, yeah, well, I, I did, like, steal that stuff from you, but my character's chaotic evil. Is what he, <laughs> it's what he would have done. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have played with that person before. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly. Here's here's a part where the DM gets mad. Yeah. He gets <laughs> angry at his party. It's, it's very honest mm -hmm. about what it's like to play uh, RPGs. Yeah. And, and I think that's like one of the big appeals of it. Cause it, it's, it's not just like uh, the RPG setting is like set dressing. Right. It's like, you know, this is made by people who really understand what it's like to play these games yeah, are, and, and what parties players. are like. They're definitely role players. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, I enjoy the, I enjoy almost all of the stories. They all have like a, a little quirk or a little quip. Uh, usually, it's the fact that they're being ultra violent yep. <laughs> or ultra decisive about um, what's going on. Like there's a part where these two maidens are are rushing towards them with flowers from the city, and they're just so happy to see them, and and they're just you know they're giddy. And then, but Bob. And what's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, I, I don't remember. They are like, these are harlots. They are, they're vixens. They're banshees. We got to kill them, <laughs> even though they look perfectly innocent. And then um, Sarah and, and Brian are like, uh, maybe we should just hold off on this. So they end up killing the girls. And in the girls' clutch hands there there's clutched a note saying uh it's a wonderful day the king had a baby <laughs> so they were just happy go lucky women that these guys slaughtered so that links to a chain of events where the townsfolk get all pissed off at these guys for killing these two women and so and they're they, oh wait yeah are they halflings uh, is that this story i don't remember but like it, it ends with like the town in flames right? right right so they basically slaughter the whole town and destroy the whole town all because they had this this misunderstanding of what's going on and that happens like so much in the in, mm -hmm. the, in the books it's it's kind of funny i i think it's funny it's it's very true to what it's like um to play yeah, a game like yeah, this yeah yeah and as for as for comics because later on in the issues, it becomes less of a comic book and more of a... It's like uh, maybe one-third is the comic and the rest is D&D &D rules and, oh. and gaming rules and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, and there's like different variations. Like this is the the magazine. They turn it into the magazine. Mm. So they have like different stuff. They have um, maps and all this kind of stuff. So then the comic is actually a lot less. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, and there's there's different different versions. There's like Knights of the Dinner Table, um, illustrated, where it's the, you don't have these type of um, art. You have real illustrators doing the art. Mm. So that's that's kind of interesting. But so on a scale of one to ten, what would you give this? Uh oh gosh, um, I, I'm a big one to tenner. Honestly, I. God, that it's it's really hard to say. I I'm I'm between a six and a seven. Um, between a six and a seven. Uh, it, cause like I I I understand the appeal of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know this this uh type of comic really isn't for me. Um, but like, it's it's very heartfelt. You See, know, I and would, it's very genuine. I would think it would be for you because you're you're a gamer, so you fully understand what they're saying. I do. Um, but also, and like this is. Um, you know, this might be, again, uh, one of the differences in, like, how RPGs are approached nowadays versus 97, um, where these characters are very much portrayed as, uh, you know, uh, power gamers, mm -hmm. as, like, right, you know, we right. call them, where it's, like, it's very uh, combat-focused, very, yeah, um, yeah. Like, like, the actual storytelling of the game takes a backseat. Right. Whereas, part of, like, the big appeal for RPGs with me is... Um, you know, being able to uh, craft a character and a story and arc around all of that. Like, right, like when right. I when I approach an RPG, like one of the first things that I do is like, okay, um, who is my character? Like, what 
are they looking for? What is wrong with them? Yeah. How do they fix it? Yeah. And maybe this is just you know the the uh, the filmmaker right. Uh, right. part of me coming through. Right. But I I really like characters um, mm-hmm. that aren't just uh, I I guess set dressing for right, right. the gameplay. Whereas these guys, they just want to get cool stuff. Right. <laughs> like the whole first beginning story is they have a bag of holding with henchmen inside the bag of holding organizing all of their stuff. So they go through a dungeon and they take literally everything. The tables, the cloths, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, there's like uh, toenail clippings. They take everything. Yep. So... Whereas, you know, um, with, with my playgroups, it, it's very, it, like, it's not uncommon, like, for a character to ha- be purposefully given, uh, like, poorer stats. Right. Simply because it's it's a more interesting way right. to roleplay. Right, right. So, I, I guess it's a matter of gameplay versus roleplay. Yeah. But I definitely, uh, I see the appeal. Um, and, like, I, I did enjoy reading this. Um, but is it something that, like, I personally would, like, continue to come back to? Uh I mean, I'll I'll pick it up mm-hmm. if it's you know there, you know. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't think it's something that I will go out of my way. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a solid eight, um, just because I was hesitant to read it at first, but when I did read it, it sucked me in, hmm. and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough to get all of these issues, and um, that's that's kind of telling of a comic. If you put if you pick it up and you put it down and never think about it again, that's you know that's a, a poor comic. But if right. you pick it up and you read it and something sticks with you, which often many of these stories have stuck with me, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, that happened in, in an issue of KODT. Then that's kind of a kind of a a trait of a good comic, even though the art might not be mm-hmm. there, the the stories and writing might not be perfect, but there's something that sucks you in and grabs you. Right. So, it, there's there's definitely passion and, and like genuine heart put into this. Yeah. Uh I, I think that, you know, what it's trying to achieve, it's very good at. Um, I don't know. I like. I think I might have to read some more of these before you know I really get hooked. Yeah. But yeah. I enjoyed this comic for what it was. Excellent, excellent. All right, so there you go. You got a, a between a six and a seven from, from Colby, and and a solid eight from me. Um, so I guess I'll we'll see you again next time. All right, so long, everybody. Bye.